suffering. Here come the vengeance of the Most High, the wrath of the Most High. Trust me. I know it's all here. You know, so a lot of people might not like what it is, the prophecy that come out. But I'm going to bring it real because it ain't going to be nothing nice for us. Especially those that are part of the two-thirds of the children of Israel. I don't care if you think you are one-third or not. The scriptures say, dare not make thyself one of the number. You don't know. First, first John 5 and 3. First John 5 and 3. For this is the love of the Most High, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. See? We've got to keep his commandments. That's what it's all about, people. 1 Corinthians 14 and 33. 1 Corinthians 14 and 33. Gotta, you know, everything is got to be done with order. 1 Corinthians 14 and 33. For the most high is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. So let your woman keep silence in the churches. We don't want to talk all the time in the church. But he said, let your woman keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. Now, how many how many women really going by that scripture? <laughs> it say, let your woman keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. But they are commanded. You know what a command means? That's an order. That's the law. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also said the law. See? That's what it says. I didn't write it. Don't get no attitude with me. That's what it says. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. What is a shame for women to speak in the church, you hear that? What part of that y'all don't understand? Do what it said. He said, and if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. What is a shame for women to speak in the church? Because you know they had, if you look at the church they where we had like the tablet, you had the men inside, you had the women on the outside. A lot of times they was on the outside. It wasn't even where the men were. But now we have men on one side and women on the other side, but they were like, like on the, a lot of times they were like outside. You say, what, came the word of the most high from you? Came it unto you only? Verse 40 said, let all things be done decently and in order. That all things be done decently and in order. So what's the order? We just read the order. He said, as saith the law. What is he talking about? Because all they read was the law and the prophets. They didn't have no New Testament. So what is he talking about? He's going all the way back to Genesis 3.16. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. And sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. But that means, you know, a man's supposed to make a decision for the woman, but the women now making their own decision. And when it don't turn out right, because you ain't following what your man would want you to do or told you to do. Oh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. Next thing you know, everything is jacked up because you're sinning against the law. Like it says, as saith the law. That's what he's talking about. And there's other times besides the times you come to worship that you could ask questions, you could deal with, you know, those, because all women are not married, so if they they not married, then it's he just saying at the time of, the time that we gather together, it's not right for women, because you think about everybody speaking out and doing, doing whatever, you know, I've seen in my time, you know, and dealing in the truth, women do. All of them do the same thing. It'd be all a bunch of chaos, that's why I said, once again, most I said that he's not the author of confusion. For the most I is not the author of confusion, but of peace. And see, what we say, why he say peace? Because when everybody talking, all these women talking, 
That's so you know there's chaos. You know your women don't get along like you should. Women don't get along like this shit. But of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Why you come back and say, you gotta look at what's happening here. He says, let your women keep silent in the churches. Right after that. Well, saying the author of confusion. Why you come back next and say, let the women keep silent in the churches? Right after you say, he, most times not the author of confusion because they can bring a lot of confusion. That's why you got to be in order. 1 Timothy 2. 1 Timothy 2 and 8. I will therefore, like I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubt and, and doubting, being sincere. As you pray, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety. Cover up your body. Cover your body up. Women now, they they all they, they make everything so you can see everything. You know, imagine ain't nothing for the imagination. Men look around, you know, especially married women, you need to cover yourself up. You know, you look at the Arab women, they covered up, but they all their dress came from us. That came from us. We the flavor of the earth. We the salt of the earth. But here we are in America, you know, even the women in look at slavery, the women that was out there on the fields, they had a, a day dress covered up all their body. They had, you know, head pieces on their heads. They want to pray. Look at, look, just look at to inquire of the past, you know. The modest apparel, but at least you're going to be covered up as an Israelite woman claim yourself to be righteous then you got to look like righteous and you will get more respect you know wear that long wear, wear the dress down to your ankle well, you cover it up you're not supposed to be having your cleave like women have the cleavage showing and all that that's not righteous that's not a righteous look that's why I said Verse 9, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, being focused. You know, shamefaced being able to be humble. Not all mouthy, not all, you know, strong spirited where they are not shamefaced. That's showing a sign of humility. That's why I say, first thing you said, adorn, put on modest apparel. You had a modest apparel, but you don't have the other part, right? Or you have the, the same face of this, but yet still you all showing everything. You got your legs, got your dress, your mini skirts on, and your dress, you call yourself an Israelite. Nah. No, 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 no. Not with braided hair, it says. Not with braided hair. Braided hair? Oh, no. Women ain't going for that. <laughs> well, I can't pray my hair. I ain't say it. I'll say I'll say it, but I ain't write it. Because <laughs> you heard me say it, but I didn't write it. It say not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. See? I'm gonna read it again. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness. You I don't think I don't really think women really understand what it is that we just read about in Genesis 3.16. Before that, you know, and what was offered to women for listening to Satan and his lie. Tell them they're going to be as gods. They're going to be as powers. And the first power that she probably thought about was who? Because you know the power, the most high power, was the one that was given directions to Adam and her. Or to the Adamites. So who you want to be like? That's what he offered us. So that's why it's very important that he says, shame faced it. You got to look at that because you don't want to be exalted. 
We in a condition called hell. You don't want to exalt yourself because this could be it. You can exalt yourself. A lot of women, this is going to be it. Since we just dealing with the woman topic, this is what they're going to get. See? And this what, you got to look at what Satan offered her. Uh, first and foremost, in Genesis 3, And two, it says, and the woman said unto the serpent, who was the devil, the Satan, and the characteristics of those mm -hmm. entities, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, the most high has said, we ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So they knew. She knew, Adam knew, both of them knew. They knew this. Said, so you eat, and this is a tree of good and evil. We can eat of the tree of life, but we couldn't eat of the tree of good and evil. So why we have these stringent laws on us, people? It says, and the serpent said unto the woman, the first lie ever told, ye shall not surely die. For the most high does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods. See? You're going to be as God's knowing good and evil. See? And this is what you're looking at in this world now because he know he got a short time. So he's going to try and tempt the woman to think that she's on point. But remember, many are deceived by their own vain opinion that evil suspicion overthrown their judgment. Who created the evil? The most high who we use to deal with the evil. Satan and his little imps. So here comes Satan. Who brought it with Satan? And think you rolling with the most high on the right side of my shot, y'all was shot, you're not. Because you want to exalt yourself to be somebody? Look, he said, what you think shame face it is? They ain't trying to be nobody in this wicked ass world. It's a wicked world, man. Know why nobody want to be nowhere, nobody in this world anyway. We got the kingdom. That's going to last forever and ever and ever. Verse 6, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise, I know, I know, I know something. I'm wise. I'm wiser than everybody. She saw the tree was pleasant to the eyes and to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. See? And that's when they went into wickedness. Going back to 1 Timothy 2. That's when they went into wickedness. When they disobeyed the most high and listened to someone else. See, that's why I say, I understand, but I don't want to go deeper to it, but I, I will say when you understand how Shaitan works, get into the minds of people and have them think a certain way. And when you think a certain way, you speak a certain way, then you act a certain way. You have these little imps get in there and do that. That's why you got to be filled with the spirit of the most high truth from the right side of the most high. Because the most high got his left side too now. And he ran on the just and the unjust. You know, so you got to know. That's so why I say many going to say that they, they're in the spirit of the most high. And they are. But they're not on the right side. They're on the left side. And that's why so you got to recognize whether or not you really dealing on the right side, and you have to be able to study a lot to know a lot. This is a whole curriculum. It's a vocation. As I went over the other day, it's a vocation. It's a job. It's a job. And it's you constantly learning, constantly learning, constantly studying, constantly learning, continually. Going back to uh, 1 Timothy 2, in verse 9, it said, In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness, that's humility and sobriety, being focused and not being a trunk. Not with braided hair. Uh oh. So now what do you do? You say, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, costly garments and so forth, but which becometh women professing righteousness with good works it says you want to be righteous as a woman it says be like this it said let 
the woman learn in silence with all subjection. So, you know, spirit, that's why a lot of times I've been muting the call, so you can learn in silence and you won't be sinning. You won't be doing what's wrong. Then if, afterward, you know, if you allow to say, you know, say someone ask a question, then it's asked if you want to, you know, ask a question or give a comment. But as far as like Leslie coming over, and you, women is if everybody can talk, and a lot of women want to talk, and it it'll disrupt the spirit. So I said, let the woman again. Just another verse. He said, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. But I hear what he's saying. He's not saying this because they, they they come up with a, an excuse. Ah, oh, they did that in in that time, that day and time. Ah, oh, that was that that day and time. But the most high, this is written for us people. This is written for us, not for. just the people that was living during the time that Paul wrote this letter. Listen, Psalms 102 and 18. This shall be written for the generation to come. This is going to be written for the people that's going to come in the future. And the people which shall be created shall praise the Most High. See? So going back to 1 Timothy 2 and 12, I mean, this cuts, this cuts these women pastors, Poof. cuts them. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Because when a woman is, just like I'm teaching right now, and... I can tell men and women, okay, sh Shemai, when a woman's doing it, she can do the same thing. She can usurp the over the man, tell the man what to do. A lot of these pastors, women pastors, they tell the men what to do. The brother said he went to a, a church, you know, the uh, man was there like, you know, it was like they brought this out, men smiling them like they ready to shoot them or something. That's their leader, the woman. So you can tell me she's not usurping the authority over the man? And most churches, they believe in the New Testament. I mean, how do you read that and justify being on a podium teaching men and women and children as a woman? You know, I just got this, you know, somebody that brought to my attention, man. You know, it's like women be on a cycle. They still touching everything in the store. We had order. You got you picking up stuff that somebody didn't have handled everything, touching everything. I know that's what these young people, they really got a bad about touching everything. We got to eat behind that. It's defiled. That's why I say the earth is defiled and the habits thereof. They cooking, they, they, they doing whatever they do normally. They up on the podium. They sitting in the, in the church. Tell me they're not. They doing this, they following this. And you serving the authority over the men too, telling the men what to do. Verse 12, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. You know, that's why I said it's it's a lot that a woman can do. If you want to deal with something, deal with these young girls. Deal with that instead of trying to be in the same position as a man. Deal with these young girls. Get Grab all the young girls you can and show them how to follow this in modest apparel. Come on, them Daisy Dukes or no Dukes, or nothing on Harley at all. Show them how not to be doing the things that they're doing in secret that's really a bit open up to them. You know what they're doing. 
take the time to deal with them instead of trying to do the same thing that we